but you can type three in the chat if you think we should just leave him be altogether. I, I don't know why why he deserves to be timed out, but you know, if you're going to ask for a VIP badge, there's got to be some risk to it, right? Otherwise, you know, otherwise it's just too easy. Otherwise, everyone starts asking. So, uh, yeah, let's kick this off. Let's see what happens. Thank you so much, Faith, for the 37 months. It's a crazy, crazy look. Muted, sorry, Mike died. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, my microphone is in a little bit of a broken state at the moment, and I don't have a way to fix it. Uh, I've ordered a new headset. It doesn't come until Saturday, so sorry for muting. It's not me pressing any buttons. It's just my, it's just my microphone is literally broken. So obviously, I don't realize. I can't tell that it's muting until. Maybe I could turn myself up. Do I hear myself like this? No. I'm trying to think if I could press a button and then hear myself in my ears. But I don't think I can without deafening myself. I don't think anyways. Test, 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 test. No, I don't know. Yeah, I don't have a way to fix it really. So it kind of just sucks. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, it kind of sucks. So I'm getting a new headset. So, again, hopefully it'll be fixed on Saturday. Um, until then, we just have to roll with it, guys. So I do apologize for the random mute. Anyways, I was just talking about how Faith, no one wanted him to be a VIP. But also, no one wanted you to get timed out. So I guess it's the best of both worlds in a way. Or well, kind of, not not really. Anyways, let's talk about the game, guys. Sorry, a little bit distracted. Uh, I was doing such a good job talking about the game. And you know what? I just went through the entire list of what we were going to be casting. Basically, we're going to be casting all the rogue matchups first, and then we'll see what's going to happen from there. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of the current plans. We do see the lair about to finish the bin nest about halfway done. And we do just see, again, those few Hellions moving down to the bottom side. The Viking coming along and across, looking to see what will happen. Yeah, Siege Tank finishing up from Keen in the main base. Going to be coming forwards and just getting sieged up to cover the front. 
There's a few hell and some keen going to come over to the right hand side. Viking is going to go have to clean up the overseer. Obviously, a lair came down, but it is just for Banelin Ness, and so probably just Banelin speed starting in the near future. And Rogue trying to pick up some information here early on. Again, this is a five player group, and the top three players will be making it out of the group into the playoffs. First place obviously gets a little bit of a heads up and gets to go straight to the round of eight. Second and third place of the group will go into the round of 12. That one's able to knock down a couple of those group humans. Picking their way through the rocks, and we do see the Hellions again coming down through to the bottom side. Yeah, plus one melee, plus one carapace coming in. 16 lings, Balin Speed starting up. Trip team, it does go down. You see, I mean, King getting a bit of a push going in, obviously, with the fastest impact and combat shields here. This actually going to be tough for Rogue not having his... Oh, no! The Siege Shanks get some great shots off. I was going to say, tough for Rogue not having his... Um, his Banelin speed yet. Well, it didn't even matter, because the Siege Shanks just killed everything first straight up anyways. Ling is getting down to the low ground. There was a lot of Lings, and that's the one thing that Rogue really had going his way in this. And he will, with the Lings streaming and clean up. A 20 worker lead, he should be okay to rebuild. Good hold in the end from Rogue. Kind of crazy that he lost the Balins like that and still made something happen from this. And Rolling is coming down through the center. And you see one of the tanks getting surrounded pretty quickly here. And as that tank gets surrounded, we do just see a few Balins finishing up right now. Queen's going to press forwards and start attack. Those Marines. Marines taking quite a lot of damage, and we do see one of the medivacs picked off right there. Pulling the SCVs. Wow, I didn't even realize Keen was so all in with this, but he is on five racks. No third CC. Sorry, that's the distraction of the microphone that's uh, taking my attention away. All right, well, now the Banelins are very important, but about to have plus one, plus one. About, well, does have Banelin speed. There's not even that much here. These Banelins are just, or these SCVs are just trying to soak up some Banelin connections, but I just don't think it will be enough from Keen. And Rogue is going to be able to shut this down. GG for Keen. Rogue picks up a game number one in this test. Don't Starting off to the bottom right hand side. His aggressive two base play did not work out for him, unfortunately. In the bottom right, our blue Terran player is Keen. Down the map. See if he can bounce back as to the top left hand side. Our red Zerg is Rogue from Janair Greenwings. Lots of improvement, SC2. Thank you so much for the eight month resub. Much appreciated. We're having a real battle with the 450 subscriber count, guys. We've been up towards it twice now, like one sub away. But, uh,. Yeah, we're dropping back down. Kind of getting back up. one four 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 at the moment. You guys got a Twitch Prime that you haven't used just yet. If you've got one just sitting there. Don't sit using it on the channel. Uh, we're going to be sending out replay packs again soon. There'll be a new replay pack. Probably, I think we're going to... I know it's been a while, but we're going to wait till the end of this week to send out all the replays from this week's Wardy TV Summer Championship. So if you guys want these Rogue replays, Gumiho replays from today, as well as everything else we cast... We pretty much give replays out for everything, so if you want to get your hands on that, join our Discord server, be a subscriber, drop the Twitch Prime on the channel. Other benefits include uh, getting unconditional love from myself. Uh, you also get access to the Wardy emote, so you can spam Wardy Kapopas. Or you can go to Base Trade TV, whether you love them or hate them. It's always great to go and spam some Rift Guitars. It's always great to spam some Rift Blushes. Rift can love slash hates it, so honestly being a Wardy sub. It's worth that Twitch Prime. Want to make a muted command? I would make a muted command, but I feel like people would start spamming it to meme me off, you know? <laughs> I feel like they would, uh, I feel like they would, uh, 
just, you know, some people are just going to start spamming it. I'm going to be like, no, I'm muted. And then I'm like, wait, guys, I'm not muted. And then like, haha, we got you, Woody. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, you guys got me good. And everyone's like, haha, yeah, we got him. The Twitch chat Charles like, you know, whack their heads against each other because they're too clever to think of a better way to do a high five. I nice to see Rogue showing up because so often Rogue in these online events kind of shows up and just goes like, oh boy, it's like, wait, was that Rogue? And we don't see much more of him. Rogue made it to the playoffs of the Wardy TV Summer Championship last year. The not just the playoffs, but the the playoff playoffs, like the the, the global the kind of the global event where the European and the Korean players met against each other. But he finished in the top six. Uh, he got through his group in second place. But then he actually lost to Denver in a five-game series, which was quite shocking, honestly, to say the least. He also got knocked out in the semi-finals of the Korean event last year. So last year's uh, Summer Championship for Rogue was not quite the performance he would have been hoping for. I'm sure he would have been hoping for a little bit more than that. So Rico is going to be moving around in the main base. Pops the Queen and a couple of drones around. Two Hellions actually just go diving into the main. Nice catch with draws and slow lings, though. And that Hellion's going to get pushed away into the corner. A cheesy buffalo for the Twitch Prime for seven months. Thank you so much. I got you, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Do you appreciate it? And so Reaper going to be coming around and uh, popping a grenade down, getting some damage done. Is going to pick up one of the drones, looking for another in the next few moments, perhaps. It's down the bottom side, no Lord is going to get picked off as well. So yeah, Kian, I mean, obviously more Hellions still coming out, but he will start Stimpak. So at this point, it's getting to the stage where you need to kind of lift up that ba factory and make way for some barracks, but another command center will come down before that. Again, Kian doesn't seem to be shying away from just getting up in towards Stim and so on pretty quickly in these games. Well, obviously, with a third command center, he's in a very different position to what he was in back in game number one. Hellion's hanging out up on the top side of the map. A few queens in the middle are going to be able to start dealing some damage to a Viking there. So Viking getting pushed away over to the left-hand side for Hellion's loading up. And go and start looking towards the main base for a bit of a drop-off. He's coming into position pretty quickly, though. Again, Rogue on top of everything at the moment that Keen is trying to throw at him. So, Rogue not really faltering just yet. Two more barracks in the main base. As mentioned, obviously, that factory made way. Factory now starts up a tech lab. Siege tank on the way out. Starport has only been used for a medevac so far. And now one of the Hellions does go down. There's a Liberator as well. Oh no, it's just Hellions. I thought it was a Liberator because I just couldn't see. And usually when certain drones are dying and I don't see anything on the minimap, it's a Liberator somewhere. But it's actually just Hellions at the front. So they do get in for a few extra drone kills. Eh, I mean, it's okay. Where's the Starport, by the way? In the natural expansion. It's such a weird place for it to be. Go ahead and start up that reactor. I wonder if that Starport almost actually was misplaced. So what, what might have happened, I'm not sure where the Starport was originally. It wasn't in the natural. So I wonder if what's happened here is that Keen has sent the starport to build a reactor. And while it's flying into position to build the reactor, he's rallied his structures to the natural. And so the starport's gone to the natural and flown over there rather than building the reactor. Because the starport wasn't originally here in the natural expansion. I wonder if that is kind of on the rally point, right? So that would kind of explain why maybe he's not got medivacs out already despite having stim. Because he definitely could have had that reactor up a lot sooner, so... Feels as though it's a definite possibility. Both and fifth racks coming through. Both players going into 1 1 upgrades. Keen a little bit ahead on that one. We never really talked much about the position of Rogue's third base, but at the end of the day, it comes in on this bottom location. He is able to defend it now. It just means he gets the fourth base up for free. I mean, this is King's Cove. It's a very easy map to defend multiple bases on, etc. So, nothing really too crazy about all of that, really. Fifth hatch going to drop down. 
from Rogue on the right hand side there. A few Marines going to lift up into that medevac and again Lings and Banelings. Just hanging out in the center for the moment. That Baneling speed still just ticking along. 1-1 one, one melee upgrade still coming into play as well. Marines lifting up away from the Lings Bane. Still some Marines here, gonna stem in towards the center, gonna pick up a couple of creep tumors already. Lings pressing forwards and Marines are gonna lift up and head over to the left hand side. These Marines from Keen coming in as well. I'm gonna pick off an overlord nice and quickly, so yeah, we'll get some damage done. Just using the drops at the moment to try and again do what he can, do as much damage as possible to slow the Zerg down as well. Getting group spread alone is already pretty nice, as we do see this medevac going to lift up and starting for a moment. They have to head up the left hand side. Marines with Lorden as well picks up a drone and another queen that's able to just push the medevac up to the top side. Medevac going to boost along in towards the main base now, so. Just into the main, and again, those marines try and see what they can do. If that gets taken down, the queen chased and is going to fall. Ah, at the end of the day, he gets five, six drones out of this as well. Make that seven. Yes, last marine gets it. It's a very good attack in the end from Keith, so he's able to get quite a lot from this uh, little drop. And still has this other medevac on the map as well, which is also, also at the same time having a very good time. Just again, picking off creep spread and so on. All of that said, look at the creep spread that's still on the map. The creep is still just all over the place, so Keen has not been able to... I don't know if it's not that Keen hasn't denied it well enough, it's just that Rogue is so good at replacing it. Rogue not getting 2-2 two -two upgrades as he goes up into Hive, playing this pure Ling Bane style, no Spire or anything along those lines, just wants to go straight into fast Ultras. It's one of those styles where you should have upgrades as a priority, but... Yeah, missing 2-2, two -two, he's going to be very late behind on getting 2-2 two -two upgrades, and that's obviously going to hurt quite a bit for him here as we see Banes rolling towards a couple of other mines going up. Oh, I mean, those Banelings actually able to connect a little bit here. There's again, just creep spread all across the map currently. And we see the little mines firing away. Banelings going to get taken down. All right, all right. I mean, the Ultra's Cavern comes up. The thing is for Rogue, he really just wants to... Do oh! Nice with a mine shot there, gets 21 kills. Now the thing is for Rogue, he kind of wants to sit back until he has ultras, right? He doesn't want to force fights. He finally starts his 2-2 upgrades, we're going to be seeing Bio in the center of the map, pressing forwards, creep spread. Going to be going down over on the right hand side. Marines are lifting up, heading back down to the center. And again, that ultras cavern going to be completing in the next few moments. Finally getting rid of these widow mines as well before they go off once again. Got a little bit of damage from Keen though, able to do some damage, able to kind of keep Rogue busy for a little while. Two siege tanks pressing forwards here from Keen. Holding the center of the map, and again Keen up the right hand side. Zerglings, Banelings. One little mine's gonna be setting up a little bit more. Lings coming in. Big widow mine connection though. Again. This only gets easier for Rogue once he gets access to Ultralisk, and that's coming up soon. You can see the Kitan is playing in production. But he's just going to keep going in. He realizes he has enough to clean Keen out. And Clean gets Keen. He leans. Keen leans. I don't know how to make that a joke. Firstly, put an L in front of Keen's name or something. I don't know. Keen gets cleaned up, and Kane is going to be. Well, still pushing forwards, but into 90 drones, that's a lot of reproduction available. It is 2 2 upgrades at the moment, that's one of the things that Rogue will definitely struggle with. No matter the upgrades, it takes them a lot longer to kill these units than they maybe should, but of course they are on the way, and Keen is forgetting his final set of upgrades as well at the moment, so that means that Keen is actually losing out on an upgrade advantage that can still kind of, you know, persist in this game. Keen, uh, your Rogue is catching up moment by moment here, so. Spire drops down as well. He sees Liberators. Obviously, the next stage for Keen is to introduce or Rogue is to introduce Corruptors to be able to deal with those Liberators more effectively. The 
delivering CG Nova at the top side, going to get rid of another couple of drones again, just being a nuisance here as the Queens will get transfused up. Liberator gets shot down, Lings and Banes from Rogue, collecting in the center of the map. And again, a bit of a bio force up through the middle. Widowmines are coming in and able to get some more drones once again. Ultralisk and Zergling is coming in here. I'm going to get rid of even more Widowmines right there. Going to run in. Looking for a surround on the Marauders. Doesn't quite get anything though. Besides, so let's just back off again with the Ultras in play thing. You know, it should become a bit easier for Rogue now. But also might just be waiting for some Corruptors. I mean, he doesn't actually have the gas to build Corruptors at the moment. Or Widow Mines starting to go off. Getting okay connections, the Widow Mines. And having to pull back once again. Over the last few moments, he definitely has made progress against the creep spread for sure. Looking up now, though, trying to get out of there. Still, the Liberate is causing the most chaos, I think. And Rogue will be extremely pleased once he gets some Corruptors up to properly deal with that. Sorry, guys. I know the FPS is a bit low. I'm not sure what's going on. Apparently, King's Cove just doesn't want to behave with all of this creep spread on it for the moment, so... Apologies for that. What a mind drop up the right-hand side. Again, a few more Corruptors on the way out. Plus one Flyer attack coming in on the Spire. There's Bioforce Akeen heading out through the center. Keen up through the middle and, well, Rogue finally with some counterattacks. It's one of those things that usually you're meant to be seeing all of the time when you're uh, playing this kind of Ling Bane style initially, but Rogue has obviously kept busy enough so he couldn't counterattack. Is he still going to get this planetary? He is going to get the kill just about. He's very close to surviving. Only a handful of Zerglings able to get the final shots on it there. A few drones going down. Those Widow Mines coming into play, but near a Spore Crawler, that means those Widow Mines will go down. So Widow Mines will fall, and it's going to be seen again a few more Banelings, more Banelings, Banes in the center. We see this uh, Widow Mine drop coming out over the left-hand side. Plus one flyer attack coming in then again, just powering up Corruptors, etc. As we do see a bit of a Ling attack on the left-hand side, this time cleaned up. Another eight drones going down. And I tell you what, it kind of feels like Keen has been doing a very good job staying alive, but he's having a very difficult job making the kill and blow, although Rogue currently doesn't have gas to build anything. So actually, Rogue is kind of stuck down on a 40 army supply deficit with the only ability, the only thing he can make is Zerglings. He's just been so gassed up. And it's kind of weird. I mean, he's got the base. He just never took the extractor here. He never took extractors up here. They've only just been taken now. He absolutely needs to sort this out because he might be right back into this if Rogue doesn't have the gas to build up the units that he needs. Another set of Ling Bane down the left-hand side. Rogue just lost 20 drones. He will be able to pick up a few SCVs, but again, quite a few Lings going down. Now Rogue's starting to add some Corruptors into play, realizing that this Liberator count is really becoming a bit more of a problem. He has completely got rid of Ultra Production, by the way. Okay, he starts up another one now. But he only had one Ultra here. How many has he lost? Only the one, so he only ever made two. It wasn't a lot. Final set of upgrades on the way in from Rogue as well. In the end, Keen did get that final set of upgrades much faster than Rogue, so he's playing with that advantage as well. Now, as he adds in Ghosts too, I mean, the problem is you don't want to go into too many Ghosts because too many Ghosts is actually problematic for you at the moment as a uh, Terran player because it's actually still very Ling Bane heavy. And if it's very Ling Bane heavy, that's kind of the answer to Ghost. But a few Ghosts mixed in can absolutely do very well sniping a couple of Ultras, etc. So I like the composition and the numbers that Keen is setting up for at the moment. Two nukes in production as well. So Keen really looking to try and take this into... A much later stage of the game, perhaps, if he wants to start nuking around the map. It's a fantastic form of harass in the later stage of the game. Doesn't have... Oh, no, he does have cloaking, so he does have the ability to cloak those ghosts up. Didn't see that in production. 
Well, that's nice. Obviously, again, he's ready to just send those ghosts out and start nuking, so... Don't think he wants to send all of the ghosts forwards, though. Changelands denied its corruptors come down the right-hand side of the map. And we'll see they're out of position for a fight. I like the audacity. Just a nuke straight up on the army. Rogue apparently does see this here and will come forward to kill the ghost before the nuke will land. I like it though. You know, if you miss that nuke, you know, you miss that kind of little uh, red dot. You're looking around your base expecting it to be a mineral line. That would be... Uh, that's pretty nice. You're going to see families rolling down the right side. They're not going to connect on much. They get the front line of marauders, which again is not really enough to justify anything there. Yeah, I'm going to see a few marines just stimming up to the right. These Bailings morphing in. Should be able to go deal with that. Rook just pulls everything back. Make sure he cleans it up nice and quickly. Drones get back to mining. Building a couple spore crawlers too. Knowing this is a position where liberators can attack. Knowing it's a position that could be nuked. Any sort of detection there will definitely help. Keen just going into five more command centers. So, here on King's Cove, we're really starting to go the distance. I'm just going to run on through plants. The fortress will be surrounded. Bane's Ultras pressing forwards as well. A couple snipes line up. Ultras goes down. The ghosts are going to get connected into. Here's going to see those links pressing forwards. They're going to get picked off as well. Another nuke's lined up somewhere. I'm not sure where that actually is. Meanwhile, the drops on the top right hand side get cleaned up too. Rogue sits strong at 200 supply. There's the nuke. Hits a bunch of drones. Links on the way over. Now missing the overseer. But there they are. They fly on in and the ghost will fall. Four more ghosts in production here from Keen. The marauders coming into the top right hand side as well. They're going to be able to get rid of a couple drones as we see. Still see Lings, Corruptors, Overseers flying around the upper right hand side. Zerglings from Rogue along the left. These marauders picking up a few of those Banelings there as well as it's a widow mine to hit a few Zerglings in the front again. Things chasing down those SCVs. He's gonna go after that sense tower now. Two more ghosts coming up into production. Again, liberators or siege marauders are set. It's just this stage of the game my rogue is obviously feeling a lot more comfortable. I mean, neither player's really got a bank, which is the kind of craziest part of all of this, though, right? For a game like this, you would expect players to get up to a stage where they have banks available. Corruptors get sniped down. That wasn't pretty for Rogue. Lost quite a bit there. He's now going to go running in with Zerglings, but the initial Widow Mines do quite well. Ripper is being cleaned up by those Corruptors as the Ghosts line up the snipes on the Ultras. And most of the Ultras disappearing pretty quickly there. The problem is if the Banes get up towards that high ground, the Ghosts are going to be in trouble. Banes going around wherever they can, and... There was the lack of detection there for a few moments that really caused the problem. Lings are streaming in for the ghost now, but the ghosts do very well against Zerglings. There's an ultra remaining, not anymore. The Widow Mines get the kill. Oh man, if the Overseers were there a little bit sooner, the Balins went off more effectively on the ghosts when they were cloaked up. That would have been deadly, devastating. As it stands, not quite going to happen there. All right, well, units gathering up on the top side. Lings, Corruptors, and Overseers. A couple more Banelings about to finish up as well. And the nuke lines up. On the top right-hand side. A lot more Zerglings coming into play. 22 minutes into game two. Our second best of three of the day. We've got a lot more action coming up for you guys here in the Wardy TV Summer Championship. Hope you're enjoying it. Hope you're loving it. Hit that follow button on the channel as well. Make sure you see us. We're going to go live with more games in the future. Lings and Ultras run down to the bottom side here. Ghosts and Widow Mines. Looking going to see what they can do. That plant you fortress gets taken down pretty quickly. I mean, denying bases right now extremely important. Especially for Keen. Uh, Rogue, sorry, who is extremely behind on resources lost. He needs to outmine the Terran player, and at the moment he is doing that. Just needs to make sure he keeps it up. This is a nice catch, gets rid of this medevac.
The cloak goes looking for some nuke action. Unfortunately, runs into a spore and a spine. I love this, a spore and a spine, right? So actually, if a ghost just goes running by, the spine crawler can pick up the kill. That's really cute. It's a really nice little position, and it's not random at all. He knows that that's a very common place to send a ghost up to get to that top side of the map, so... That's really cool. That's really cool. Is never, where's the other spine? The other spine's up here? Yeah. He's absolutely just looking to deflect ghosts from this top right-hand side. Just again, the same combo. Spawn and a spine together. Ultra's in the center. Banelings as well. Zergens and Bane's gonna run in on the left. A few of these mules in some trouble. Liberator finds some shots off onto the Zerglings. A lot more Lings on the way out. The plus three ship weapons on the armory as well. And still just going to be seeing the Ultra there. Able to swipe down. Or uh, oh yeah, I guess. Chomp down on a Marine. Sneak lines up over on the left hand side. At the same time, Rogue is pressing into this plant before as that will fall. These drones are going to pull away. They're actually going to go and surround and kill the uh, ghost eventually. The ghost will get some kills before that is done, though. Five, six, seven. I can't count. It was only six. <laughs> six drones killed then by the ghost. That's actually not bad, all things considered. So the drones will get back to mining. The ghost was denied. Well, pushing up this right side, the spine of this ball being cleaned out, and now the ghost has found its way around to hit this top right hand base. Looks like our Zerg players found that pretty quickly. They also gets that ghost pretty easily. So ghost goes down again. More Zerglings on the way up. Another Ultra in production. And two more Liberators coming out of the starport. As you see Marines and Marauders pushing over to the left-hand side. That hatchery going to go down as well as the Zerglings are going to be able to fully surround the Marauders there. Pick those off. The Medivacs uh, flying back down to the bottom. You see a Widow Mine shot or two there. Taking off a lot of Zerglings. The Ultra's running in. The Banelings going off as well. I mean, SCV's trying to get away. It's a lot of workers killed. Good denial of bases again by Rogue. He's keeping the income, the economy of the Terran player as limited as possible, which again, we talked about, is so important for him because of the resources lost difference in this game. It's a 12,000 difference. You need to stop the Terran mining for that. Ultra's going down. But now Keen only has 34 SCVs remaining. A lot of army supply for Keen. But Rogue is picking that apart little by little at the moment. Forward of Mines on the way up here from Keen. So continue to set the ups and creep in the center. Going to be going down more Bane through the middle. Corruptors are coming in, chasing down those medevacs, which try to get away to the bottom side. Again, Rogue. Coming around the right, has to be careful. Those Widow Mines will start to split a few lings up. Gets a few of those shots. There's still Widow Mines available, though. Sends a few lings ahead. Trying to eat up some Widow Mines shots. There's some Widow Mines still left, and they're getting ridiculous amounts of kills. Rogue has just lost his entire army. What a horrendous fight for Rogue. Some of these Widow Mines just killed literal tons of Lings and Banes. And Rogue has no money left on this rebuild, and he only gets to half the army supply of Keen. Rogue just threw away the advantage. He was doing such a good job denying income, etc. He did not need to take a fight. He should have been playing the longer game. He should have been sitting back and playing it slow. Now, Keen absolutely should be able to take advantage of this if he's able to recognize. Single ghost going to be cloaking up, sending a nuke on the top right side. Morling is trying to run around. That's the problem here from Rogue. He has no gas, so his army is literally being made up of Zerglings. And nothing really else. This Spore Crawl is very brave coming forwards. It is going to die in this nuke. And Rogue has fallen apart a bit too much here now. Ghost pulling back towards Liberation Zones. Lings and Banes continue to run on through this. And all well, those Lings able to get us around, cleaning up a bit more bio. Ultra gets cleaned out as well, and this is absolutely looking to be Keen picking up game number two of this best of three series. Just may take a little while for him to still play this out, of course. 
might just take a little while. But Diamond Rogue just types that GG. See what happens. As we're tied up one to one. What's to play for here? And in the bottom right hand side, our red Zerg player. This is Rogue. Kind of felt like he was doing everything correct in that last game until he just took. To put it simply, a horrendous fight. I mean, that's just a fight you never really meant to take. And it really did show. It really did show. In the top left-hand side, our blue Terran player. This is Keen. Alright, so... Keen really... I feel Keen really struggled. And I... I I don't want to take away from Keen. He did the right sort of moves. But I feel like more than anything, it was Rogue making the mistakes in that game rather than Keen forcing mistakes. Like, Keen didn't do anything to get Rogue to take that terrible fight. He just sort of, like, sat there and Rogue was like, I'm going to attack you. And Keen's like, well, I borrowed my Widow Mind, so go me, I guess. I played that really well. Um, there were some nice moves, like when he saved the Ghost in the High Ground, for example, and stuff like that. That's obviously, you know, was a good little something from him as well. As we get this set up and rolling. Over the next few minutes here, we're going to see the uh, hatch gas and pool coming up at the moment. And an overlord from Rogue heading up to the top side. So Thunderbird is going to be the map. And well, the thing is, this map is actually a lot better for what Rogue was, or what Keen was trying to do in the last game. So that's a lot better for what Keen was trying to do in the last game because it's going to put him in this position where he's going to be able to really be able to hit bases. You know, when you go up to five, six bases on this map, they're much more easily kind of hittable by drops. You know, you're able to pull the Zerg apart and pull them from one side to the other much more easily. That is something that we just didn't have on King's Cove and it's a known fact on King's Cove is something that we know about King's Cove. We know that map is not great in that scenario. So, yeah, as we see a few things nibbling away at some low ground plating. And we're seeing this Ruby coming across and popping a grenade down on a drone, getting it bopped around. Factory is going to be finishing shortly here from Keen. Ripper is stuck in the corner here at the moment. Good grenade, saves its life, hits the queen, stops the shot. Drone will get the hatchery down, though, so the Reaper not able to be a complete legend. That would have been ridiculous. <laughs> that would have been really crazy. All right, well. We're going to have that Reaper just continue to pick away here for the moment. Getting some damage done. Things do have speed, they could go and chase after that rogue. He's more interested in making sure he denies the Reaper scout originally though, and he does now see the Reaper leaving. He's gone into a pretty fast lair, and that's probably why he's very eager to deny this here. No second gas, and so probably just looking towards a Link Queen Nidus. He has an overlord on the top side, and another one heading up to the top as well, so multiple overlords for Nidus uh, setups. He just now started his wall, but he's looking to wall this ramp rather than this choke point up here. And that's quite important to take note of because it means that the wall into the natural. You could Nidus here and just run the links into the natural still. There's the Nidus network on the way up, so Rogue going to get aggressive for this final map of the series. Lings are going to, again, immediately deny that Reaper Scout. Reaper just gets away. So yeah, denying that Scout is extremely... Do not want Keen to figure out what's coming up next. So Keen currently playing in the dark, and well, he starts up a siege tank. He's got a few Hellions, which are now moving into the center of the map. He needs to be very careful with those. That single Zergling backs away. But obviously, it has morphed in. There is a space in the main base for Knights to drop down without being seen. You can also drop one down to this right-hand side as well. Let's see what the Overseer chooses to go for. As soon as Keen sees this overseer, he probably has a very good idea of what's going to happen. Drops the Nidus down. Units are going to start responding pretty quickly. The Reaper was denied once again. SCV is pulling in. Absolutely needs Queens to come out of this. 
right away. Hellions on the low ground. Queens not going to get out. Nidus doesn't finish. Rogue might be in some trouble. Another Nidus down on the low ground. I mean, Lingus will come up to this high ground as well. Again, no proper wall off just yet, but the deny here initially is going to slow this down a lot. And another big part of this as well, I think is very important to take note of, is that you just, you know, building up over here originally, it takes a long time for those queens to come over. So queen's going to load back into the Nidus, looking to get the Nidus up in the main base, it would seem. Units are not going to be able to press forwards into that uh, Nidus and kill that off in time. So the Nidus will finish up. Bunkers are going to come down to choke up this area, though, and... I'm not sure if Pete Rowe can really do enough as he comes into this. I mean, Hellions are looking good. They're staying choked up. The Marines pull them back to deal with Zerglings from the low ground. A CV count is going down. Rogue up 34 to 25 workers. More Lings in production as the Queens. In their way through the third CC, but that feels like it's not really... You're not going to kill that, right? So now Bunkers are going to be done. You have stopped Keen from mining the natural expansion. So it's a little bit close at the moment. A little bit closer, you see Lings and Queens pressing forwards. Hellions putting themselves between the bunkers. SCV is pulling in to try and repair. All Lings are going to run through, and I mean, Rogue is just talking down SCV after SCV, but he's going into more and more Zerglings. He's not looking to transition out of this at all. And that is the problem, as we see those Queens going to jump back into the Nidus. Queens going for this. will be able to pick that up. Marines coming down to the natural roach roaring on the way here. Marines popping out of the Nidus as well, and just going to be seeing this medevac going to complete in the next few moments. Roach roaring about halfway done. Combat shields on the way on the barracks as well. So getting this set to go as we see the Zerglings coming across here from Rogue pressing forwards. Start taking a lot of damage. This depot gonna burn down as well, so depot will fall. Three more queens coming through now. Thirteen roaches also. I see Shank of Keen just coming over to the side, and the roaches are uh, like the, just the next stage of this. Kind of hoping that the worker deficit is maybe enough to just give Rogue the advantage he needs to. Get something of a fight here, but he's going to be fine against Tim Marines and, you know, multiple siege tanks. It's not looking pretty. Where is he going to go for the fight? Just looks like the low ground will be the choice. With Ravagers in play, he has a creep team on the high ground here as well. He can see uh, Corrosive Bow down this first siege tank very quickly, actually. Marines coming forward as Corrosive Bow hits that tank, but the Ravagers exposed. The Marines jump on that in the perfect moment. Roaches will get some damage done. Now Anidus up into the main base. No Siege Shank there to help defend that position. And I think you pull back to that Nidus in the main. Mm, Queens. Oh no, he doesn't have Nidus on the low ground anymore. <gasps> oh no. That's a shame. Because he could have Nidus a Queen up there instantly to get the transfer. Well, he could have probably transfused it anyways, but probably just realized it wasn't going to be in time. Rogue is trying everything to win this out with this aggression. Queen has been rebuilt in the work account. Now again, Bunker set up at the front as well. He's getting safer and safer as time passes by here. Queens are going to come forwards. They can't transfuse the, the structure that is building, but they can transfuse it the second it completes. For the moment, it looked like he was just going to go for this. Yeah, I really feel like getting into the main would be kind of the play for Rogue, but... I mean, if you get into the main base, you don't fight those Bunkers. You can get rid of these two tanks very quickly. You shut down production. I mean, it just feels like... These queens have missed chances to save this Nidus now. Is it going to go up? Transfuse and get hit. So you can go into the main base if you want to. A few roaches pop out there. Okay, and I think, yeah, you've got to go into the main base. Marines are going to start coming through. Rogue was a little slow to start unloading as he goes into the main. Link stops stream now. Roaches and Ravagers going to be coming in as well. He's losing drones across the map as well, by the way. We'll check in on that in a moment because right now this is the important push from Rogue to try and take Keen down. SCVs will pull into this. Marines stemming forwards, the Corrosive Files trying to hit that Siege Tank in the back, it will go down the Siege Tank. More Roaches showing up as the Queens still have energy to transfuse each other with the last Ravager now killed. It's these final Marines trying to make a stand, plus one attack in play. No Ravager to hit the bows on a tank on the low ground, and that tank fully repaired. Another tank on the left-hand side will come out, will siege up, and Rogue is in trouble because Rogue just can't kill the Siege Tank. 
The Queens will be running out of energy soon. Transfusions are going to be done. 18 SCVs have been killed. Rogue maintains a nine worker lead, but that will be about all. As Keen actually for a moment there ran out of money. Couldn't repair the siege tank up. Ravager just coming into play again, looking for the course of Bars. Reactor killed on the starport. Another Ravager morphing in on the top side. Coming around the top here, looking to cross the bow, get rid of this siege tank, get rid of some of the damage output. Keen on 20 army supplied against 61, maybe. There is still a chance here for Rogue to clean this up now. As we're going to see, Roach and Ravage are slowly making their way through this main base. It's down to the natural for Keen to keep on mind, but that means his reproduction structures will probably have to relocate. Marine 7 forward, starboard will go down. Trip Tumor pop down as well. Another Ravager on the way up. Those Ravager bars, he saw how the difference between being able to bow down tanks and not have bars for tanks at all. Pressing the forwards here. This is an important moment or two. Can you get the Corrosive Bars off on the Siege Tank? Second tank Siege and up. SCV's pulling in again. Corrosive Bars doing a good amount of damage, but the Siege Tanks have not been targeted, and so the Ravager's going down. Keen now down to 12 workers. I think in the end, the continued production of Rogue is just about going to be able to make this happen. Ravages around the left side again. They're looking for the bows on top of that siege shank. The Queens in the front here will kill the Marines and Rogue will find a third and final game of this series.